About two months ago, I created a character poll asking everyone who is their favorite narrow gauge engine in Thomas and Friends. And to my expectations, a lot of people voted for Duncan and Scarloe the most. And the one who got the least love is Peter Sam. Wow, that's an understatement. To tell all of you, Peter Sam is my favorite narrow gauge engine. In my opinion, he is one of the more underrated characters of Thomas and Friends because I don't see many fans talk about him. I think there's a lot behind Peter Sam that we can all appreciate, and something unique that separates him from the rest of the narrow gauge engines. That's the topic of today's video analysis. I'm the TTE fan with Legos, and I present to you Peter Sam, the little narrow gauge engine. As the handle was shut up, Peter Sam had to run the line. He was excited, and the farmer found it hard to get him ready. Sober up, can't you? He growled. <laughs> First and foremost, I will explain who Peter Sam is. In 1920, a narrow gauge engine was built by Kerr Stewart & Co. at the California Works in Stroke-on-Trent, England. It was brought to the Northwestern Railway by rail, and then transported to the Minnesota Railway in the hills by road. The little engine was painted green and named Stewart after the man who built him, Kerr Stewart. The reason for the name was because the Minnesota Railway followed a pattern naming its engines after their builders. While living on the Minnesota Railway, Stewart worked alongside his two colleagues, Falcon and Duke, until the line reached closure in 1947. After the railway closed down, Duke was sheeted and left in his shed, while Stewart along with Falcon were sold to the Sodor Aluminium Works in Peel Godret to assist the aluminium company's expansion project. Following the project's completion in 1951, both engines were prepared for disposal and stood in the yard for a year. In 1952, Stewart and Falcon were purchased by Sir Handel Lloyd Brown and put to work on his narrow gauge line, the Scarlowy Railway. They were overhauled, repainted, and had their names changed to Peter Sam and Sir Handel respectively. Stewart was renamed to Peter Sam after the railway's controller at the time, Mr. Peter Sam. Since his arrival, Peter Sam has had many adventures. He had inadvertently left the refreshment lady behind. Then he had a terrible accident that badly damaged his funnel and later received a brand new one that improved his performance. And much later, he and Sir Handel get reunited with Duke, who was found and rescued from the abandoned Mitsodor line. When Peter Sam was younger and called Stuart, he was bubbly, eager, and enthusiastic. He was very cheeky and would constantly tease Duke of being old and worn out. Hello, Grandpa. Are you short of puff? Nothing of the sort. Routine maintenance. He can also be somewhat a little naive and careless, and probably takes things a bit too seriously, which can lead him into trouble. Come quickly! Come quickly! Stop! 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 You've left her behind! You've left her behind! When other engines tease him or cause him to misunderstand something, he is quick to anger and wish to go head to head with them. Well, the 
crying out loud. However, despite his infectious and high-spirited nature, he remains selfless, well-meaning, and polite to others. The narrow gauge engines were first brought to life in season 4 of the television series in 1995. Peter Sam's stories were taken straight out from the pages. His story arc is virtually the same as told by Wilbert Audrey. The unlucky Tug has stated in his retrospective review on season 4 that Peter Sam is the MVP of that season, and I do agree with him. Peter Sam is a fully fleshed character by the end of the season, because he has the most developed arc of the narrow gauge engines. Yes, more so than Scar Lowy and Duncan. Although Audrey had ended Peter Sam's story from there, the TV series would take this character to new heights and add some new traits to his personality. After season 4, the stories would be written by the creative mindsets of the TV producers. In seasons 5 and 6, the narrow gauge engines just get 3 episodes to themselves nearing the end of each season. A bit of an odd choice for episode order. And in these episodes, Peter Sam doesn't really do anything. He gets only one supporting role and a minor cameo and that's all. He is used more just as an archetype tool for plot building. In Duncan Gets Spooked, he loses control of his trucks and gets reprimanded for it. And in Faulty Whistles, he gets his whistle damaged by a tree branch. When I re-watch his appearances in these seasons, I noticed how similar his two roles are. He is used as a victim in an allegory of racism. In this case, he is the subject of ridicule for Duncan. Fancy not securing your freight cars on a hill? They'll come back to spook you and your special funnel. Woo! I can't run on the tracks without my whistle, chuffed Peter Sam. That would be too dangerous. An engine's not an engine without a whistle, boasted Duncan. The final chapter of Classic Era Thomas, Season 7, did do something interesting with Peter Sam by writing him in a surreal episode, The Refreshment Ladies Tea Shop. This absolutely blows my mind when I first watch it because it connects with a previous episode from three seasons ago. The fact that the writers remembered that aforementioned story and follow its continuity is so astonishing. The Refreshment Ladies Tea Shop shows Peter Sam's generosity when he tries to help the Refreshment Lady find a place for a new tea room. What I admire about Season 7's episodes is how they build up the characters, and this one develops Peter Sam very nicely. Also, for a fun fact, Peter Sam was initially going to have an episode where he runs down a rocky terrain like a roller coaster, with school children aboard his coaches. This idea was created in concept art by artist Robert Galt Galliers, and interestingly, open-topped coaches based on the ones from the railway series were set to appear. But the concept was scrapped and changed into a story about Reneus instead. I don't have more to say about the episode other than I don't think it's really good. The story idea sounds silly and gimmicky and the final result sucks because it totally botches Reneus' character. Now, I think the best development Peter Sam got in the television series is ironically in the hit entertainment era. As everybody knows, the show was rebooted into a mandatory educational children series under the influence of hit entertainment. With the writing format drastically changed, the cast was dumbed down and flanderized to flat personality traits to fit the gimmicky, childlike, moral-heavy themed narrative. And that also applied to the narrow gauge engines. They turned from older, wiser, mature, courageous engines 
to being younger, childish, irresponsible, idiotic baby trains. But Peter Sam is the exception, and maybe Sir Handel as well, I suppose. Peter Sam didn't have much screen time as the other narrow gauge engines in the hit series, but the main episodes he starred in are fantastic. These two episodes add a new perspective on Peter Sam, but at the same time do not regress his character. Season 9's The Magic Lamb shows a rather cynical side of Peter Sam, when he is very skeptical to believe in Scarloe's tale about Proteus. Peter Sam huffed loudly. I don't believe there's a magic lamp. Granted, a lot of fans think Peter Sam is out of character in this episode. And I do understand. This sort of cynical attitude makes sense for other flawed characters like Duncan or Sir Handel. But I have to disagree. I think this is a very interesting flaw to give to Peter Sam. Before, in his early years, he was naive and careless, and often fooled by other engines. So it is cool to see him grow wiser, but only for him to fall for curiosity. By the end of the episode, after a few encounters and false alarms, Peter Sam is left in wonder about the old legends of the railway. I've already done an analysis on this remarkable story, so please check it out after you're done with this video. After this episode, Peter Sam was reduced to an NPC for two seasons. He would appear occasionally now and then, and never given major focus. Then, an episode from season 12 came around, which serves as a sort of second part to the magic lamp. Mountain Marvel. I'm genuinely surprised that this episode even existed. Continuity is a one and miss priority in the hit entertainment era, where most simplified stories don't connect together to form a structured narrative. So Mountain Marvel is a rarity, because it follows previous established continuity from three seasons ago. In this episode, Peter Sam discovers a rusty old statue of the legendary Proteus, and decides to become famous by taking it to Miss Marvel's show for everyone to see. He tries to keep it as a surprise, but ends up causing a slippery mess. And with the help of the other engines, Proteus's statue is restored and displayed at the show. This episode is a welfare for a standard Three Strikes formula story, but it has a good approach, the crash is pretty cool, and the concept is executed well. What's ironic about these two episodes is that they were written by none other than Sharon Miller. Yeah, the notorious writer who filled the series with cringing alliteration and rhyming dialogue for 8 seasons wrote these Peter Sam centric episodes. How poetic. I don't appreciate every story written by Sharon Miller, but Peter Sam's double episode arc is easily one of her best contributions to the series. So kudos to you, Sharon. After model production ended in season 12, the show transitioned into CGI, and Peter Sam along with the other narrow gauge engines once again took hiatus from the series for a few years. And probably a good thing too, because the show was at its lowest stakes at that point. It wasn't until 2012 the narrow gauge engines would make their big comeback in the special Blue Mountain Mystery. To Nitrogen Studios' credit, these characters transitioned beautifully into CGI, complete with upgraded designs resembling their real Tallyclin Railway counterparts like Peter Sam's funnel resembling that of a real diesel ejector. I'm not going to talk about Blue Mountain Mystery, since Peter Sam's role is pretty minor, so let's move on. Season 16, the season that followed the special, presents another episode devoted to Peter Sam, titled Don't Bother Victor, which is also written by Sharon Miller. So is this episode good? 
Well, yes, but not great either. In this one, Mr. Percival puts Peter Sam in charge of the railway and informs him that Victor will be coming for a repair visit, but mustn't bother him for little problems. When the other engines are breaking down, Peter Sam tries to help them out in frankly silly ways, despite Reneas' pleas to fetch Victor. It's only when Peter Sam breaks down himself that he realizes that Victor's help is in fact necessary. The plot of this episode is nothing new in concept, as it's been done before with the green controller in season 10, and it's no different to the latter. The main character is given opportunity to be in charge, but misunderstands the task and makes three total mistakes. Realizing the error of his ways, he resolves all set three mistakes and all ends well. Although the premise is unoriginal, I don't hate this episode at all. The story feels grounded and doesn't regress any of the characters, even if Peter Sam makes his decisions rather foolishly. It's also nice to see the Scarlowy Railway again after years of absence, and to see Victor outside of the steamworks, since he was always stationed in that one place in every appearance prior. He did leave the steamworks on some occasions, but not shown on screen, so this is technically the first time he is seen out and about in different locations. After season 16, Peter Sam's appearances start to phase out, to a point where he would only show up now and then, usually working at the Blue Mountain Quarry. And after season 17 and 18, Peter Sam just vanished from the series altogether besides a minor speaking cameo in season 20. He's not completely gone yet, but just left in the background. It seems clear that the writers had decided to write off the narrow gauge engines to focus more on newer characters. His final canonical appearance in the TV series is in season 24's The Great Little Railway Show. When Percy spreads the news of a railway show held at Alfstead Castle, which he thought to be an event for smaller engines only, Peter Sam is one of the engines eager to participate, and later happens to wait in line for the event. And... that's it. It's a mundane ending to a character, but he did leave the series on a good note. Left untainted. Most prominent characters have had turbulent lives throughout the franchise, somewhat with main character syndrome or inconsistent writing. But Peter Sam is exceptional to that rule. His life in the series is not so turbulent, but has been eventful and consistent through and through. We see his character go through different iterations in different eras of the show. He started out as established in the original railway series, and the TV series added new layers to him while keeping his personality intact. He was only a major player in his debut season, and then sort of got shafted as the show progressed, especially when the cast grew more expansive season after season. That's actually a good thing. Peter Sam didn't need a compelling conclusive arc because he's basically been through it all back in season 4. When the show was in its dark stages, it's probably for the best that he should remain as a minor constant. But every time he's given a spotlight story, it's always good. Hell, even his episodes are created by the most notorious writer in the show's history. That's why Peter Sam stands out amongst the other narrow gauge characters. He was the only one never ruined during the bad eras of the series. He remained consistent until the show's end, and ended his tenure on a high note. And that is truly fantastic. All that was said has proved my statement that Peter Sam is very underrated, and I hoped I'd give every other fan a newfound appreciation for this character. At first, Peter Sam's special funnel was a great joke. Sir Handel and Duncan 
asked him why he had sat on it, and then hooted with laughter. But when Peter Sam started work, it was a very different story. Even Sir Handel was impressed. I can't understand it, he said. Peter Sam never seems to work hard. He just says, <laughs> and simply strolls away with any train he's given. He makes it look so easy. Ah, <sighs> well, after a long damn time, I finally finished it. It's been a long while since I've done an analysis video this big, and I hope it's worth the wait. I look forward to do more videos like this in the future, as well as other content. So please subscribe to tune in for more. If you have any requests for content, do leave them in the comments below. I'm the TTE fan with Legos. And thank you for watching. See you next time.